In the last session, we covered the details about customer centricity. We also learned that well-implemented concepts of customer centricity will lead to reduced risks. In this section about the block, about the business plan, we will explain that financial institutions are in a unique position to measure and manage risks, especially credit risks. Banks, um, in particular local and regional institutions, actually were always privileged in a position to create and collect proprietary knowledge about their customers. Admittedly, not many use that privilege in a structured manner. Through the personal interactions, long-term relationships and a really thorough understanding of the environment, relationship managers in financial institutions are generally much better positioned to understand risks. Through their proximity to the clients, the familiarity with local procedures and the trust they created with their customer-centric approach, banks are also best equipped for collection and special servicing. To capitalize on these advantages, the banks shall actually establish methodologies for assessing risks. We will introduce a couple of key concepts here in this um, uh, block about risk management. My name is uh, Christian Rummer. I am the CEO and founding partner of Kulana. We have developed a low-code based open banking, digital lending and asset management platform. Our banking platform is used by multiple financial institutions in lower and middle income countries and by asset managers around the world. In our blog, we will share with you our expertise and ideas about how to organize financial services, how to develop a successful business model for the next decade, how to manage risks and how to implement all the ideas and concepts in the right speed and sequence. Risk management is a crucial facet of the operations of any financial institution. It generally encompasses a range of components designed to assess, mitigate and navigate potential uncertainties. Looking at it from a regulatory perspective, the main categories for risks are credit, market and operations. For the purpose of the business plan which we discuss here, we will focus on credit risk. Credit risk is considered a voluntary risk, meaning this is a risk that the institution can take or decline depending on their own decision. Credit risk is also very much in the focus of the first line of defense in risk management in an institution which requires that a transparent and well-analyzed information is available at the front office when dealing with the client. I know there's a lot of jargon and background necessary and here we try to stay uh, focused on the key terms. In parallel, we're also preparing several online seminars and training sessions about risk management that you will find on our website. To manage credit risk, we need to combine tools, skills and experience with proprietary knowledge about customers and local markets. Sources of information are quite broad, if not unlimited. They can be classified as quantitative or qualitative. We can call them external or internal. The key is to identify these relevant sources for the assessment of credit risk that help us identifying and quantifying the risk. In this context, you hear about rating and scoring models. These models aggregate information about credit risk into a single number, a score. This score shall classify the exposure on a risk scale. This is an attempt to structure the approach to credit risk. Depending on the nature and the size of the counterpart, the calculation of a score can be more or less complex. A lot of myths rank around the scoring models and their quality. When you hear conversations about those models, there are frequent references to machine learning, artificial intelligence and other technologies as if you are in the game of buzzword bingo. Let's try to unpack the tools here a little bit. The simplest form of a scoring is often used for retail and mass market borrowers who do not yet have a client relationship. Here, external information including demographic data or assessments provided by credit bureaus is used. 
in uh, more developed countries, instruments like FICO score are well established. While the exact formula for the calculation of a FICO score is secret, we know the input factors, which are a person's payment history, the amounts owed, the length of the credit history, the number of new accounts and the type of credit used. Next, once an institution has established a lending relationship, the calculation of a score can get more sophisticated, as you can include now real payment performance and transaction information. This helps to enrich the calculation. Such scores help an institution to scale the credit exposure or offer additional products to a client. Once you navigate towards larger clients, specifically SMEs and corporates, the calculation of a score gets more complex and also more qualitative information needs to be taken into consideration. The question whether an SME as a counterpart defaults depends on the company's financial strength, but also on uh, factors such as management skills, experience in managing crisis situations. Ratings for such customers will rely on an increasing degree on heuristic concepts combined with the statistical models that we have discussed before. Ideally, rating and scoring is not just used for an initial assessment of credit quality, but also for monitoring and valuation. For retail clients, a lending decision is often considered as an educated bet on the client's performance. For corporate and SMEs, though, a proper monitoring process that also includes rating updates can be essential to interfere early with a borrower's operation to avoid later performance problems. While rating and scoring models are rather common and standard, we still think that financial institutions can increase the predictive quality of a model by increasing the variety of input factors. One area where we believe more information will contribute to the model quality in the future is the whole area of ESG risk assessment. Better integrating this source of information will be an invaluable improvement of the scoring quality. An interesting component of all these scoring models is the ability to make credit risk comparable. Here, the standardization regarding the measurement is suggested. Ideally, a financial institution attempts to derive a probability of default from a rating or scoring model. The probability of default is a commonly defined indicator for credit risk. It differentiates itself from the loss given default, which measures the quality of the collateral package and then predicts how much a financial institution will lose, assuming a client reaches a default stage. Together with the exposure at default, the three factors allow the calculation of the expected loss. In a later chapter here in this block, when we talk about the risk appetite, we will pick up on the calculations of the expected loss again. Now, aside from the standardized rating and scoring models, we think that a financial institution can also improve their ability to measure and manage risks through upgrades to the overall lending process. Here this starts with an assessment of the credit risk, where tools such as the SWOT analysis, an abbreviated business plan, sector expertise, or tools such as a business model canvas will help structure credit risk assessment. The key here for the financial institution is to fully understand a customer's business and the inherent risks. This in general sounds trivial on the surface, but actually is much more complex than it appears. Improvements to the lending process can be made at, in all phases of that process. This relates to better assessment during the initial analysis phase, better tools to reduce the operational and fraud risks, structured monitoring which helps identifying problems early on. Having a monitoring and an early warning system in place as well as structurally enforcing the necessary steps on a borrower is really useful. A financial institution shall focus on the monitoring of the borrowers right after disbursement. This includes the process of regular monitoring of performing loans. A process such as the one shown here is useful. 
It includes regular monitoring of performing loans. There are watch lists and escalation mechanisms for loans that are still paying regularly but where problems are identified. Remember, a client that doesn't pay anymore is a problem. He is no longer a risk. A risky client is the one where we see that he pays today, but he might, might not pay tomorrow anymore. We need to find ways to identify these clients early on and help them. Because we still see too many institutions which do not bother to work with customers if the debt service payments are regularly occurring. Such an institution will never develop a positive and fruitful client relationship if the only contact with a client after disbursement is happening when problems arise. Specifically in the area of corporate and SME lending, relationships are formed when the client recognizes that the institution cares about the positive performance of the business as well. If you develop such a positive relationship with a client, you will see many other business uh, benefits coming out of these relationships. For example, there might be a situation that borrowers even approach the institution in case of problems because they know they have a partner with whom to work with. To make this happen, early warning systems that incorporate regular quantitative analysis of external and indi internal indicators, covenant monitoring, financial analysis, as well as early warning questionnaires, count as the best practice for monitoring. With an effective early warning system, credit losses will be reduced through de-risking. By the way, this will also improve the institution's capacity to take risks, increase returns and improve capital productivity. For the client, there are benefits as well. They include a lower pricing as well as an active support from a qualified expert in the management of critical situations. Even in this short introduction to risk management, you can already see that with a well-structured setup of risk management, the bank is in the position to price the risk and provide confidence to investors about its ability to measure and manage risks. This opens the door to selling parts of the risks to investors, for example, through a risk-sharing fund, while maintaining the responsibility for servicing and collecting. This is useful because of a critical aspect. While we have established that a financial institution can be very strong in measuring and managing risks, it might not be in the best position to assume all these risks. A financial institution that is focused on capitalizing its unique knowledge for the generation of revenues, minimizing risks and optimizing the utilization of its equity capital will be a winner. In the next section of this blog, we will speak about data analytics, another core concept that supports a financial institution's business model. We look forward to seeing you in the next video.